Hello everyone and welcome to the I Will Never Widen My Fucking Stop show. I'll be your host. My name is Reese. And I will be your host for the next hour or so and we'll see if we make any money. Oh, this two ticks out. All right, the NASDAQ formed a new day opening gap here, which tells me that uh, Wednesday's trading is going to constantly reference this. Now, we're going to go some standard deviation multiple higher or lower than this gap here at 15,261. Of course, which how many multiples of that higher or lower for Wednesday's trading, I do not know. But can almost guarantee that they will take us some standard deviations of some measure higher or lower than the new day opening gap because that is it's a common gap and that is its purpose all right so guys we're on a top step uh, 150k combine um, I'm always trying to preserve the capital that I have I, I really don't care about I care a lot more about keeping what I have and getting that sell limit filled I'll tell you that so moved our stop up to uh, tick and profit so I'm probably going to scratch this trade, honestly. And then we'll see where we go from there. First trade of the day is a scratch. All right, there's pretty much no point in looking at this time of the day on the one minute chart. It's just not enough data for Ooh. let's take a look at uh, some of the mentors tweets have um, Paladin Butia. What separates me from most traders is 100% not my accuracy. It's mainly how I'm able to manage my losses and prevent myself from making irrational decisions while trading. Quote, great traders are good losers. This is, this is the truth. Taking the world by storm. All right, some other third party stuff. Fund the trader Lambert uses zero indicators okay oh does the maestro have some new material hello everyone and welcome no oh by 10 p.m. okay not 10 a.m. Yeah, guys, it's all about the capital preservation. That is number one. Okay, watching the NASDAQ. 
watching how it behaves with this new day opening gap. All right, guys, we're coming into the Asian session. You can see that the NASDAQ came and uh, turtle souped this high. The new day opening new day opening gap here. So that tells me there might be some action today, Wednesday. Also, the economic cal calendar tells me there's going to be some action. <laughs> so should get some volatility come in the marketplace today. Trading view has changed the look of their little calendar, or sorry, calculator over here. We'll be on two contracts for now. You must be able to manage losses, guys. Never move that initial stop ever you let yourself be stopped out and that stop only goes in one direction so what if you don't have good accuracy you're making a bunch of money you're better to have good accuracy than bad accuracy yeah obviously but number one is to keep the money that you have and then to make, make a bunch of money All right, here's your new day opening gap there I want to see how price behaves around that new day opening gap. Let's see if we come through it. And then maybe um, invert it. I'm actually going to um, just pull this all the way to Thursday's trading. I think that's going to be just a an algorithmic reference probably for the entire trading session so I'm just going to leave it uh, I assume that is going to be important alright Tokyo Stock Exchange is opening soon no entries right now, guys. We are flat on the session. No, scratch that. We're up 40 cents. watching ICT's um, execution video. Breakaway gap. He calls those inverted fair value gaps before they even get there, which is crazy. Like he got, the, he has a SIBI and he's marked it out as an IFEG. Yeah, he's already got that IFVG prior to it even getting there, which is pretty wild. Um, I want to, you know, probably try that out myself. Tokyo Stock Exchange is going to open shortly. 
and we will see uh, if we see anything there. Right now, this candle here could be an order block. This one could be made an order block. See if we travel through the new day opening gap. Um, this is a balanced price range here on a four minute chart, so price might not want to even go back up there. Right now, I would certainly be leaning um, short, you know, all things considered, I would be leaning short, but it's not really moving right now, so I'm just going to wait. Yeah, we're going to go for maybe an hour, and then I will call it. Yeah, so you can see that we came below the midway point of that black candle there. So, because we came below the midway point of that, that would be a, um, an indication to me that it does want to probably continue lower through the new day opening gap, but maybe not right now. We are at a three tick spread. So there you can see this spread over there. For the people that think that futures does not have a spread, it does, uh, and it matters. Is there? All right. Yeah, absolutely nothing right now. No signals at the moment.
All right, we're coming down into that new day opening gap, guys. Uh, getting an initial reaction here, uh, which is good. Um, I don't know if that's really enough. All right, that's our new day opening gap right there. So Michael teaches that the new day opening gap and the new week opening gap, which is your resettlement gap, uh, should act as a common gap. And so common gaps act as dynamic support and resistance. They can be support on your first test down. And then um, if you cut through them, they can also invert. So it could trade into this like that. Or we could just bounce the top of it like that. Um, I think this is probably worth a long here. So we're going to try long. And then in terms of our stop loss, that shall never be moved. It shall never be tampered with. The sacred stop loss, which shall not be touched. Go right there. And uh, we'll see how that works out. All right. Probably going to be stopped out on this. I was kind of betting that that initial reaction would do it. Did not. Kind of immediately turned back around to get into this new day opening gap. Guys, the stop loss is never being widened. Ever. Ever. Not in a million years. All right. Well, I got the absolute worst fill known to man. And, uh, all right, well. It's ICT bullish breaker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that same long uh, another shot. And I'm gonna say, I don't wanna get the blow there. Um, and I'm gonna say, I will. Let me see. Target. That could be bullish breaker right there. Uh, or that green candle. Well, no, it wouldn't be that. It would be these two candles, depending on how we close. So these three candles right here. Standard deviation projection, let's do a half. And let's aim for one and one. So we'll do one and a half, one at one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at this point, the stop is going to be moved up below that low, 260 evens. Uh, it's actually just going straight to break even. I don't really want to see it come back to break even. So we'll do 260, 275. Okay. Let's bring it up below. the That candle's open now. So 264 evens. All right. No, no, you do not touch your stop. You allow yourself to be stopped out at all times. You do not touch that stop, ever. It only goes in one direction. You must be a man of principle. You must have virtue. You will not move that stop. Am I playing it pretty tight with the stop? Yeah. Do I care? No. It's ICT bullish breaker. Low, high, low.
You will see me take a lot of losses, actually. Okay. I'm going to let this recording go for maybe an hour and a half. We'll see if we can scrape out a living. He's in session. Probably going to be stopped out on this, looks like. The stop shall not be widened, ever. I'm a man of virtue and principle, and that stop will not be widened. It will be hit. That is okay. The stop will not be widened, ever. Not ever. It goes in one direction. Uh, just, you know, ICT concepts make it uh, usually pretty good if it's going in your favor yeah so yeah that's an immediate rebalance right there I would not want to see that candle turn black we go 265 evens. Okay. It's an immediate rebalance. You see how that candle immediately rebalanced that one? So no busy was formed. Now that's a, a bullish order block. Halfway point of that. Uh, one. 165. There's 166. One tick below that. Okay. Just moving the stop up. Locking in profit as we trail the market higher. Would prefer to see my uh, sell limits get filled, obviously, than my stop, but I think that goes without saying. Let's see if we're back at a profit for the day. Uh, we are, small profit. Took an initial loss. Low, high, low. It's ICT. Uh, bullish breaker pattern. One standard deviation takes us there. All right, looks like we are going to be stopped out on this. And we will lock in a bit of a profit. T 
you see that bullish order block right there? I moved my stop up one tick below the mean threshold of that. I don't want to see price make a, make this a black candle, and I don't want to see price trade below the, the mean threshold of this uh, now bullish order block. So this candle goes all the way from big and green like that to all the way black. I don't want to see that, so just get out of the trade. And move on with life to another one. Yep. All right. And that should have been a profit. Maybe it was not. I don't know. I think it was a profit. Okay. Coming back down to New Day Opening Gap. Consequent encroachment of that candle. Good initial reaction off that. probably worth another long to be perfectly honest with you okay 262 evens sell stop in the market point A to point B ICT bullish breaker, 273.50, sell two. See if we can get that one standard deviation. This is uh, ICT three candle swing, low, low, higher low. Stopped out. So, okay, we're back at a loss for the session. We shall give it a minute before we do anything else. Uh, we're down um, I don't want to say that your accuracy doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter a lot. Capital preservation, guys, all that really matters. Um, you'll eventually see what the market is up to, is, and you just need money for when that happens. You need to have capital left with, you know, to employ. Whenever you finally do see what the market's up to, it's up to something doing something well you'll eventually see it all right that candle right there that could end up being a bullish order block or a propulsion block a pretty attractive propulsion block if we got above it and then you know formed another bullish order block and then traded back into that so that being said we're just trading a you know this is all efficient trading it's barcoding with a new day opening gap sitting below. So you can see we have quite a bit of price action below. Bissy, Bissy, bullish order block, bullish order block, Bissy, Bissy, bullish order block. Uh, but they'll fool you, you know, they'll make you think, you know, we're not going all the way down there in the overnight session most likely. So. They'll they'll hang it up here. Believe me, they will they will hang it up here for a long time before they decide to plunge. Of course, I do think that you know 
Wednesday's trading. This is already looking very juicy to come in and fill back in these inefficiencies. Bull shorter block, bull shorter block, bull shorter block, busy. Busy, that's a breakaway gap, breakaway gap, measuring gap. Busy, busy, busy. Um, so, anyways, this is, by the way, market maker buy model. The smart money reversal, accumulation, reaccumulation, shot up to a higher time frame level, smart money reversal. Again, distribution. We'll see if we get multiple stages of distribution. So that's uh, the market maker's uh, buy model. Well, yeah, accumulation. A smart money reversal, accumulation, reaccumulation, shot up to a higher time frame level. That that should be market maker buy model. I think that's not really a concept that I use all the time. Of course, I know all of his stuff pretty well that he's come out with publicly, but the Market Maker Profile Series is not... I'm pretty like high-frequency trading, you know? So a lot of the grand scheme of things when, when you're doing what I'm doing doesn't really matter. I mean, it does, but it also doesn't. Like, I'm playing individual candles and you know very small order blocks and whether it's a market maker buy model or sell model as long as it lines up with a standard deviation projection I suppose alright that's a good sign that yeah so we have low lower low lower low this is ICT bullish breaker low high low so let's try a buy at the market. Let's go um, just below 50% of that candle. So 62 evens. Initial stop is in the market. It was shut out and it shall not be moved. You must treat your initial stop like a sacred icon. It's sacred ground. It shall not be disturbed. All right, we're going to do a full pull at the one standard deviation of this bullish breaker if we get it. Going to aim for that seven and a half points. That would also take us back up into this balanced price range here and this SIBI. Uh, so we could end up seeing something like trade up here, like that. Of course, we're not really out of the woods yet. I'm just betting this kind of looks like a three candle swing. Low, lower low, higher low. It's also, guys, respecting the hell out of this new day opening gap. Using that as support. So, my best guess is that it wants to pop off at some point, go higher. Yeah, but we might get stopped out on this again. Let me see how long this recording is. Um, I'll let it go for an hour, maybe an hour, 15 minutes. I will not touch that stop. I realize it might be a bit suboptimal. It will not be touched. All right, we're stopped out. Now we're down um, 380. We're trading through the New Day opening gap now. I was kind of looking at that to be an ICT bullish breaker. This could yet again be along if we find more support. But the New Day opening gap. All right. Let's see if it wants to invert it, go lower. So trade through it like this. Or if we want to use it as immediate support. All 
I don't like putting my stops in liquidity because that's slippage. Three tick spread. So we have low, lower low, higher low. So it's still trying to make a swing here. Bump that new day opening gap again, found support again. New day opening gap is here. That's also a busy. See, we have re-delivered it. Okay. Um, now we've traded through it and now it should invert. Now it should, all right, we're getting short, two. Initial stop is gonna go 50% um, of that green candle right there. So right there. And then in terms of targets, 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 let's aim for standard deviation projection. Let's aim for three standard deviations. Okay, stop is gonna go right there now. Okay, we're trading lower. Lock in some more profit. I'll lower this to one. Are we going to be stopped out in profit? No. Traded through that new day opening gap. So if we come back to it, bump it should act as resistance now. Okay, we're out. I believe that was a profit. Okay, we're down 325. I think we were down the more. Let's see. Yeah, that should cover commissions, right? Okay, we've traded now. New day opening gap should now be resistance. So high of that candle, 267 evens. We'll try, sorry, high 260.50. Let's try short there. That should now be resistance. Common gap inverted, inverted. Um, and we'll go with three on that. Oh, mark to market was lower. I have that candle. 60 50 we'll, we'll stick with that we'll, we'll see if we can actually get that filled I'll wait on that
I want to see it come up and invert that new day opening gap. Short three. I'll just hit that at the market because it uh, wasn't fully filling me. So, not the best fills known to man. Okay, uh, stop is going to go. up here and then um, profit target for it's gonna be 47 it's gonna be right there okay Should invert the new day opening gap now. Maybe the top of it and then go lower. It's kind of the new day opening gap. It's a common gap, so it should, if it trades through it like that, comes back up to it, it should do that. And then I'm aiming for this wick inefficiency down here, draw down into that bissy. That's the current thinking. That's the current thinking. Uh, we're down to two contracts now. Three tick spread is out. Okay, we're hanging in that new day opening gap, which you can see is right here. Traded through it. I wanted to see it come up, invert this common gap. It's not doing that though. All right, we're going to be stopped out again, and then we're going to go down to two contracts. Thought that that new day opening gap would invert. It did not. And lo and behold. That wick and efficiency right there provided support. Now we're up eight points. The new day opening gap did not invert. Okay. Up an ICT rejection block with that one. 
The stop will not be moved. An ICT uh, bearish order block right there in the one minute time frame. Uh, the closes respected the midway point of that. So it's fully now re delivering and rebalancing the new day opening gap. So you can see that we traded through it once, traded back up through it and left it. Now we're coming back through it again. So we are re delivering and rebalancing that new day opening gap. Should should be an influence on price all day. Kind of how those things, those new day opening gaps, new week opening gaps, they stay around. They keep playing a, a factor long after they're redelivered and rebalanced. Um, okay, the stop should go below oh, yeah, 266. All right. Okay. Wouldn't want to see this candle turn green at this point, so we're going to save three ticks. You have to imagine sometimes, like, when you're moving your stop, you're tightening it. What do you not want to see? Like, would you actually want to see that candle go from black and in your favor all the way back up to green? No. You wouldn't want to see that. That would be pretty terrible. So I moved my stop there. We go from big loss to smaller loss. And eventually we'll get in tune with the market. Eventually. We're right in that new day opening gap. Yeah, you really wouldn't want to see this candle turn green either from being black like that and then go green. We we'll don't really see that. All right, we're probably just going to chop this to 264 three quarters. We'll do 265 evens. Okay, we're chopping wrist down. Don't expect this to be a winning trade, but it's looking better than it was. A moment ago. All right. Down 407 on the session now. Of course, three contracts here on 12 points would easily make up for that. High is going to be, all right, 262 halves. Okay. You don't want to see that candle go green for being th prominent and black like that. You would not want to see it go green. That's why I'm moving it down. It's only going in this direction. New day opening gap. Kind of inverting, yeah. You see we trade through it, trade back up like that. That's an inverted fair value gap and a new day opening gap can be uh, just like that. But I still think we're going to be stopped out on this but at all times I'm worried about you know the capital preservation You wouldn't want to see it get above New Day opening gap now if you're trying to play it as an inverted fair value gap. Would you? No. Just 
I'll let this recording go until this trade plays out and then upload a break even session. And maybe go for a walk if this trade works out. I think it's going to be drawn to this busy down here but not get there. see price get up to the midpoint of the new new day opening gap now so we've trimmed risk down from the, you know that many points and we're trimming it down to now two points of risk uh, and I do expect I don't feel very good about this it's kind of looking funky like it wants to come back up oh okay that was a good reaction there nice illiquid push Okay, let's check out our other assets. I want to see the dollar index going up. Oh, big fat new day opening gap here on the dollar index. Wow. Well, that is the CFD. All right, let's check out DX. Oh, we got holes in the chart on the DX as well. Check out the daily dollar index. Big hole in the chart. The CFD. Let's check out the DX. Volume imbalance on the chart. Coming down to the ICT. Blue shorter block down here. This black candle. Okay. Back to the NASDAQ. Through the three minute. We're now sitting in a small profit. And we're going to trim the risk now to uh, one tick of profit, although that is obviously, you know. All right. Stop's only going in that direction, so you can see that we've trimmed it down as it came down, and we'll let it get hit. I don't want it to be hit, obviously. It goes without saying, but anytime this thing could invert. You know, this thing could find support on one of these wick inefficiencies, this one, this one, and uh, just rip higher on me. So, it's trying to preserve capital. I think that, from what I can see right now, the price is going to draw down into this busy, although I don't know if we get there, but you can see that my buy limit is on the way. Best assessment I can make right now. Okay. Two ticks. That's ICT bearish order block right there. It's two up close candles prior to that move down. It shows an algorithmic pivot point. Um, it's also there with that little SIBI right there, so that's a very good looking order block as it's paired with an inefficiency. Now ICT has said before that the order block should come with a fair value gap, so there it is right there. That's a very good looking order block, although I've seen them use ones that don't. So in any event, if it's paired with an inefficiency, I will call it an order block, and if it's not paired with an inefficiency, I might still call it an order block, but otherwise I'll just call it a green candle or a black candle. All right. At this point, you know, I don't want to see price. Yeah, see, it's it's 
supporting off that wick right there. Supporting off that wick right there. All right. Well, we went from a pretty bad losing trade to a not as bad losing trade. So now we're down 319.12 on the session. That's better than where we were a moment, moments ago. So, all right. Now we're trading back up to New Day opening gap. This might be long. Let's see if we invert New Day opening gap now. It's a three drives pattern. One drive, two drive, three drive. Uh, and it's interacting right now with that New Day opening gap. That's a sweep into liquidity there. That's low, high, low. That's ICT bullish breaker. Let's see what one standard deviation of that would be. 275 three quarters. And let's see if that's anything. Take us back up into that SIBI right there. But I got to see, you know, if it wants to continue resisting the New Day opening gap. Let's get down to one minute chart. Let's get to a one minute chart. Well, resisted the new day opening gap, inverted it again. So I bet we're probably going to shoot to a new low here. Um, coming up on this wick inefficiency here. There. Could find support on that. Volume imbalance there, a little hole in the chart. This is looking like a three drives pattern. So again, that's one drive, two drive, three drive. Uh, so might be worth a long. Let's see. Um, three. Um, the stop will go below that wick inefficiency right there. Initial, initial risk will be there. Um, I'm going to go for a full pull ICT. Well, not a full pull. We'll do a half. Aim for 271 with two. Aim for one at full. Okay. So the way that price is behaving right now, you know, would indicate to me that maybe we make another little low and then we pop off. Price does not really want to go too low right now. It's kind of resisting it. Inverted fair value gap, so you don't want to see it continuously get back up in there or 
it's going back in it. So, all right. We're long three. Let's get on 10 minute chart. See if uh, I can work my way out of this drawdown. That's minus Could make, it could come and, and make a new low and then pop off. Ergo, why my stop is where it is. But this is ICT um, three drives pattern, one drive, two drive, three drive. It's ICT uh, bullish breaker pattern, so low, high, low. So, some suggestion there that we're going to pop off. This ICT New Day opening gap pattern. You can see that the price has been uh, interacting with that all Asian session. A lot of people would think that this is immediately going lower, and that's not necessarily true. I mean, sure it can probably will but it's not necessarily true that it must immediately draw lower that would also be ICT swing low you see that those three lows that would be ICT three candle swing if it um, decided to go up, that would be ICT three candle swing. Not all the patterns are that difficult to understand. Very good, very attractive three candle swing if it decides to pop this off. Actually. But of course these are also equal lows, but price did just make them. So not really an opportunity for the liquidity to build up there. That's a very attractive uh, ICT three candle swing. Actually, and then come and run this buy side, buy side, get up in this SIBI, SIBI. Two SIBI principle, if it's going to SIBI number one, it's going to SIBI number two. I believe that's the two SIBI principle. He's talked about the two SIBI principle before. I have found it generally to be the case. If it's going to SIBI number one, it's going to SIBI number two. So maybe that's just Reese's SIBI principle. Of course, we didn't really fully explore that liquidity. That's just a, a little bit of a sweep into it. Of course, I do see the BISI lower. Yes, I can see that. 
and that could absolutely be the draw here. We do have civvies higher though. Price is very reluctant to go lower. Could pop that low, come in like that, pop right back up. Yeah, so a lot of people at first blush, you're going to look at this, they're going to say, holy moly, it's got to draw back lower immediately. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. It probably will, but not. it doesn't have to do that right now. Right now, the most reasonable thing that you need to be worried about is that New Day opening gap how price is interacting with that. The, that lower BISI is there. It's not the immediate draw. Okay, we are probably going to break even here shortly. Um, we're going below that low. No, we're going to break even. So we're going to uh, 58 quarters and we're going to trim risk now. Okay, we're break even. Want to see it just plow through that new day opening gap now? I'd rather actually, you know, get a winning trade on the books than another break even, but we trimmed risk, so that's good. Now we're down to commissions. All right, it's reacting off that new day opening gap again. But if it's bumping it again, it's probably going through it. So my risk went from that initial risk all the way down here. Now I put it at break even. So we've trimmed like six points of risk. I didn't want to put it one tick into profit because this this thing you know it's it's acting pretty wobbly. All right, we'll, we will do one tick. We'll do one tick. I wouldn't want to. See, yeah, okay, one tick is fine. Okay, we're gonna. So we went from a fairly you know big loss and now we're at break even. That's the mathematics, guys. You go from big loss to small loss to break even to profit. That's how this thing, that's how this works. Ain't that right, Vin Vin? Yo, Vinny. Watching you. All right. Uh, we'll go two ticks in profit now. Up to 75. Uh, all right, we'll go that much in profit three ticks that should pay commissions I want to see it just kind of plow through that new day opening gap don't really want to see it you know question itself okay yeah so very attractive three candle swing right there you see low lower low higher low uh, that's an ICT three candle swing pattern right there he hasn't taught a lot of his simpler stuff in quite a while. Um, but if you go back and watch his core content, that is just a very simple little pattern right there, the low. He hasn't taught this in a very long time, but of course I've watched everything he does. Um, so low, lower low, higher low, and that's an ICT simple swing, I guess. Um, okay, okay. Uh, we're going to go one tick below the high of that candle, so 60 quarters. Okay. And that's looking good right now. I want to see it trade back through the New Day opening gap, certainly. Just want to see it come rip this buy side. 
come and fill in these civvies. Um, let's go down a one minute chart. Yeah, I'm not going to move the stop just yet because I don't think it would make sense to, to move the stop just yet. It's only going in one direction, by the way. But anyways, ICT has not taught this stuff uh, for a long time, guys. But if you go back through his core content, that's a simple swing pattern. And he also hasn't taught the three drives pattern in a very long time. Uh, but the three drives pattern is... It's not a pattern that I've found works a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, you can see them everywhere, and it doesn't work very much. Whatever. I mean, it's not my favorite pattern, guys. I don't think it works that much. But here you go. One drive, two drive, three drives. And that's a generation of internal liquidity. Okay. And then, unfortunately, a lot of the ICT breakers don't always work as well. A lot of them do. Some of them don't. Um... Anyways, so ICT bullish breaker is low, high, low. Now, ideally, that second low there should push into like more liquidity than that, which it really didn't do. So it's still an ICT bullish breaker, but it's not like, you know, a grade A, class A ICT bullish breaker. It should push into a higher time frame liquidity, which it, it, it did not. So not all breakers are made equal. The ideal breaker should push into a higher time frame liquidity. That's ICT advanced breaker theory. But the absolute most simple pattern is low, lower low, higher low. And that's a three candle swing. And if you see it with a lot of context around it suggesting that price should turn around there, that's a very powerful tool. Here you can see the same high, higher high, well, that's actually not it, I'll show you which, I'll show you where it is, three candle swing, would be, uh, yeah, 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 that would be high, lower, well, Oh, I'm sorry, it's this one. High, higher high, lower high. So that's your three candle swing right there. Now, does he teach that very much anymore? No. But one of his older concepts, right? Three candle swing. Very simple. So not all of his work is just the fair value gap. He is not just the fair value gap man. All right, so it looks like we are going to be stopped out on this. Um... I had a feeling it might do this. Now, guys, speaking of fair value gaps, that is a little busy right there. And I would love to see that invert here to go higher. Uh, but it does not look like it wants to do that. So you can see that we're just playing that new day opening gap. I'd love to see this busy invert. Yeah, so a lot of ICT stuff is complicated, right? It's mathematics, um, takes work, but simple, simple uh, three candle reversals, no. Not all complicated. Different gradients of complicate of complication. Um, all right, we are not going to move the stop. I never move the stop. We will be stopped out, and that is fine. Um, I would absolutely love to see this invert. So inverted inverted fair value gap. Would love to see that. I really have no ability to predict when it's going to do that. Uh, but I know what it looks like when it happens. Of course, this SIBI right there could also uh, invert, right? Well, okay, I shouldn't say I have no idea when it's going to happen. If it's a macro time. It will happen. All right, we're just playing into that new day opening gap. Looks like we're going to be in, up, down, all around the new day opening gap for a long time. Right at the midpoint of it. It's really one of ICT's strongest works, but everybody kind of focuses on the uh, fair value gap. But his new day opening gap and resettlement gaps, for whatever reason, these high frequency trading algorithms, they they love them. I mean, they just absolutely reference these resettlement gaps over and over and over again. You'll see them 
you'll see him just go after these all the time. Just really. And the reason why I went ahead and extended that New Day opening gap for the entire day is there's a good chance, like literally, it will reference that the entire day. Uh, you will see Price come back to it, up and through it, probably the whole day. And then whatever Price's maximum and minimum point is, however these high-frequency trading algorithms are programmed, in some way it has to do with these resettlement gaps, if, if they exist, right? So binary code would be if resettlement gap, then this. And some standard deviation multiple of this resettlement gap here, the new day opening gap, that will end up being your higher low for Wednesday's trading. Some standard deviation multiple. Could be 10, could be 11. You don't know that in advance, obviously, but the, uh, the bots do. Bots already have in mind how many standard deviation multiples they want to take us back down or take us up relative to the new day opening gap. So that's why I'm expecting that Wednesday's trading will probably be pretty directional, at least, at least the PM session after CPI. Uh, will probably drive in one direction, and it, it will be some multiple of this. So that's a something to watch out for. You don't know how many multiples, but oftentimes it's like 10 or 11. So you see that little gap right there between 262 and a quarter, and then 260 halves. So that's a 1.75. One and three quarters. Um, new day opening gap. Some multiple of 1.75 will likely be the absolute high and the absolute low or the absolute low of Wednesday's trading because however, for whatever reason, these bots are coded to do that. So I don't know why. They are. In my opinion, guys, SEC disclosure, my opinion. Um, yeah, ICT's breakers don't always work. Um they're good to have in the arsenal, though. I, I think, uh, like low, high, low. It really should to be a an optimal breaker. Should be at the right time, right? Like London session, for example. Ooh, that's good. But see how that didn't make a new low. Ideally, the manipulation lag of low, high, low should push lower into that liquidity. This one did not. Okay, guys, we're gonna trim the risk and we're going to go up there uh, do you see that inverted fair value gap right there I don't want to really see price trade back through it now ICT knows that that's going to invert before it happens and I don't <laughs> I mean I know it can right so I can watch and anticipate that it can do that uh, but not necessarily like you know that it, that it will. Of course, that Bissy is not really inverting. It's this Sibby that's inverting. See? Like that. That's how you know it's not supply and demand because notice I cut through all the candles. Okay, guys? Now, standard deviation projections, I don't believe that he teaches this with the gaps, but uh, considering that it follows all of his work, notice that that's three standard deviations of this little inverted SIBI take us to our nearest high. And that's an algorithmic signature. All right? So I use the standard deviation projections even on stuff that he, I don't think he's taught to do it on because um, I'm assuming that there's a pattern to all the stuff that he does. So assuming that you can take a standard deviation projection off of everything, uh, I would assume that would also include inverted fair value gaps. Yeah, I mean, guys, you'll see stuff happen, and it's like, there's no way that that could be... If he weren't right, there's no way. Like, there's no way. Like, yeah, money management is important, but I'm... I'm you know, kind of telling you what the market is going to do before it does it. Well, it's not really me. I'm just Michael speaking through me. Kind of. It's kind of weird saying that. It is me. Um, but yeah, I mean, if this... If, guys, if the market were not automated, 
shit wouldn't work. Like, you know, I don't know. But basic stuff like risk management, uh, you know, that also has to be in there. So it's not really the BISI there that inverted, right? It was the SIBI. So you trade through the SIBI, trade back down through the SIBI, and even trade it back to New Day Opening Gap. So I guess it's really the New Day Opening Gap that inverted, right? Trade through the New Day Opening Gap, trade back into it, invert it. So it's the New Day Opening Gap that inverted, not the SIBI. And to be honest with you, I don't really know when the fair value gaps are going to invert unless it's uh, one of the macros that he's recently taught. But I know that they are a very powerful tool. And if you can catch a good inverted fair value gap, it, you, will, you will be very pleased with the results. Very pleased. And then, guys, these algorithms, the, the high-frequency trading algorithms, they 100% reference the 50% of these candles. There's no way that they're not. How many times I've not been stopped out one tick shy? All right. Looks like we are going to be stopped out in profit on here, and that's totally fine. I wanted it to see. Okay. We're flat. All right. I'm going to stop the recording there, guys. 87.14. Bye.